Shalom. Everybody knows that today in Israel, we call today, it's a very special day, Hag Ha'atzma'ut, in the, the holiday, I mean, festival of the independence of Israel since we inaugurated the land of Israel again in the year 1948. Just about two, three years after the terrible Holocaust that the Jewish people has endured, the atrocities committed against the Jewish people, well, in fact, the Jewish people is quite uh, in, in the habit of suffering throughout 2,000 years of exile, all the Jewish people knew was only persecutions, massacres, hatred, and finally, the terrible Holocaust in which we lost six million Jews. How can we ever forgive the world? And above all of them, Germany for what it has done to us. But one thing is sure, 1948, three years after 1945, we proclaimed the inauguration of the new state of Israel after 2,000 years of exile. And today is Yom Ma'ut, the day of independence of the Jewish state. Well, you know, the Jewish people is a people of opinions, of different opinions. There are opinions who recognize the fact that today is a holy day. It's a day in which we have to be very happy, and they do so. Number one, in the prayer of the morning, they don't say supplications, the, the regular tachanun, as well as they do also the hallel. Some do the hallel with the, the benediction, some do it without the benediction. There are other opinions who say, well, we will not say tachanun, we will not say the supplications, you know, ashamnu, the vidui, ashamnu, bagadnu. But we will not say also the halel. That's also a good opinion. There is another opinion that says, well, for example, the opinion of Rabbi Ovadia Yosef, who said, don't say tachanun, but after the prayer, you should say Hallel without bracha, without benediction. Well, I'm sure there is ground for every kind of opinion in this matter. <clears throat> At the same time, all I have to tell you is what my heart tells me. I, am I happy today? Yes, I am very happy that we have the state of Israel. God blesses it. And God bless the Jews of the land of Israel as well as the Jews of all over the world. And I deplore the fact that the majority perhaps of the Jewish people today in the land of Israel are not observant. Yes, I deplore that. My, my heart is very sad over the fact that Jews who have a Brit Milah, they have circumcision. And they are today in the land of Israel, the holy land. And they don't observe the Torah and the mitzvot. It's for me a very deplorable fact. But thank God we must say also the other side. There was never so much Torah as we have today in the land of Israel. The Torah is all over today. The observance of the mitzvot, Baruch Hashem, so many Jews, besides the Jews who are religious by birth, there are also those who are religious today because they became, they did teshuva. So you see it, great enhancement. And we are going from one thing to another. But the point that we have to remind ourselves all the time is, what kind of miracle has happened to the Jewish people? It is true that we have suffered so much. It is true that we don't have the answer to all the questions. It is true. Some people ask me, why the Holocaust? How, God, how did God allow such an atrocity to happen? 
I have no answers. Yeah, there are all kinds of answers in the Kabbalah. But for me, there are no answers. Because God is the only one who knows the answer. He knows. I don't know. Who am I? I am only a human being. God is God. The past, the present, and the future for him is in the same minute. The same day. Who am I? My heart depends entirely on what I remember from the past. Hardly know anything about the, the present. And I don't know anything about the future. But for God, he knows everything. So he knows what he's doing. At the same time, I am under the obligation to say thank you, Hashem, for every minute. Even our sages said, Hayav Adam levarech mea berachot beyom. Each Jew is under the obligation to say at least 100 benedictions every day. What is a benediction? Thank you, Hashem. Baruch atah Hashem. For everything that gives us an enjoyment, a benefit, we have to say thank you, Hashem. That's the Jew. What is the meaning of the word in Hebrew? What is the Jew? Yehudi. Yehudi is derived from the verb lehodot, the verb to say thank you. We have to say thank you. Yes, we have to say thank you to Hashem for having to talk, for sitting today in the land of Israel while still surrounded with our enemies, while still having danger every now and then. But we are also protected by the Almighty God and the soldiers of Israel. Can we? Yes, it is true that maybe the majority of the soldiers of Israel are not Sabbath observant. Maybe they don't observe the mitzvot. But they give their life. Apparently, 23,000 soldiers have fallen since 1948 until today in all the wars of Israel since then. But yet, at the same time, we are saved. We know that our power is growing day by day. We know that the name of Israel now is, is being praised all over the world, even among those who hate us by nature. I didn't say that there is no anti-Semitism. We understand that it is not the full redemption as we expect to have so far. It is what we call Athalta Digullah, the beginning of the redemption. Call it any way you want. It's not a kind of redemption after 2,000 years of exile and persecutions. Of course it is. The Vilna Gaon Alava Shalom, 260 years ago, has, has written in his commentary on the Sifra Ditzneuta of the Zohar Kadosh. He made a calculation, an unbelievable calculation. And he said that the beginning of the redemption will be in 1948, the same year of the inauguration of the state of Israel, the modern state of Israel. At the same time, Rabbi Chaim Vital, the legendary disciple of the Holy Ari, 450 years ago, he said, he writes, that the redemption of Israel will begin by whom? By those who, did, who do not observe the Torah and mitzvot. He did not say that he's happy about that. But he says this is a fact. That's the point. We have to remember this. Yes, it is true. We have to pray for our brothers to come back to their sources. You know, if you ask me what is the biggest source of the Jew, he has it in his own body. Circumcision. You know, it says in the parasha of this coming Shabbat, when a woman gives birth to a boy, on the eighth day after his birth, he should, he should be circumcised. This circumcision is also another, another point that shows that either we are crazy, the Jewish people, or there is something that we cannot pretend to understand. How is it possible 
that the commandment of God is that the boy, the most cherished possession of every father and mother, expecting a child to be born, and now they have it, they have to put him under the, the skin of the mohel. I mean, uh, under, the, the, under the knife of the mohel. What am I saying? Unbelievable. Circumcision is very, very painful. The child is crying. The parents are afraid, are worried, while the multitude around them is having a happy time. Big meals and happiness and joy, which is supposed to be. What's going on? This is a contradiction of nature. How is it possible? There is here a point that we cannot say, we cannot pretend to say that we understand. But we must admit that God insists on circumcision. Without circumcision, you are not considered a Jew. So the Jew have paid the price of being born Jewish from the beginning of their life in this world. And that gives us some kind of education, somehow a hint that a Jew in this world cannot expect a life of luxury and a life without pain. So we tell the little child, be prepared that the life that's coming to you is not going to be fully enjoyable. Prepare yourself for having some kind of pain in life. And the Jewish people has so much pain throughout the centuries. Now that we can breathe finally and have the state of Israel, God blesses it. We should not be happy. I have the, the thinking that I should say Hallel, only I cannot because I have to follow the words of the great opinions, the halachic opinions. But I will say at least the first paragraph of the Hallel, Hallelujah. Thank you, Hashem. You have taken us away from garbage, from the ovens. And finally, we can defend ourselves. For 2,000 years, the Jewish people could not even defend itself. How did we exist? But that's the biggest miracle of all. Why do you think I am Jewish and I believe so much with all my heart in God? Because... One reason. Of course, I don't have the answers to all the questions. Why the Holocaust? I don't know. There are all kinds of opinions. But nothing for me is satisfactory when I know what kind of Holocaust we went through from 1940 to 1945. My God, what we went through. It's terrible. But you know what? Miracle of miracles, we are still here. The Jewish people is in existence. Even the nations are, are bewildered. How come this nation still exists? Even the world, the anti-Semitic world, is now having second thoughts. What's going on? Have we been wrong all these years? I'm telling you this is what they think in their heart. Why do you think they hate us? They still hate us. When there is no reason to hate us, what have we done? All we did was only good things. In every country where, where we lived, the Jews have contributed so much. So why hating us? Well, it indicates only one thing. They cannot live with themselves. Call it jealousy if you want. I don't know, it's very hard to be jealous from the Jewish people. But at the same time, in the conscience, in the subconscious of everyone, they know where is the truth. They know what is the real religion, the source of all, of all religions. And therefore, the only way that, that, can, that they can manifest their feelings is only through hatred. That's stupidity, of course. But at the same time, it doesn't seem to stop even today. But we, in the land of Israel, at least, we are happy. We are secured. Our soldiers are doing a great job. Our government is doing a great job. By the way, even today, 
I'm not saying that we are now in total tranquility. No, but at the same time, yes, the Jew finally can breathe. Our sages said that the redemption will be, when will the redemption happen? There is a metaphor that describes the situation. Think about a woman who is about to give birth. She has tremendous pain. Tremendous pain. But the biggest pain is at the time when she is about to give the birth to the child. That's when she finally gives birth. Our sages said that's exactly the story of the redemption of the Jewish people. When you see that the darkness is heavy in the world, when you see that the suffering comes to its biggest level, like the Holocaust, then you could think that perhaps it is the time when a new birth is coming. And that was the state 1948. The, the Jewish state was born. Where? In the land of Israel. And the land of Israel is a land upon which we have prayed every day, three times a day, that we ask the Almighty that we should come back to the land of Israel. Where we finally are here. We are not supposed to be happy. The least is to say thank you to Hashem. And the thank you is by saying Hallel. Okay, by not saying Tachanun. That means it's, it symbolizes the fact that it is a day of happiness, of joy. Like every, like on Shabbat or, er, or any other holiday or Rosh Chodesh in which we don't say Tachanun. That's the least. And one thing is definitely sure. We are in a time that we can call some kind of redemption. In this time, we have to remember one thing. The Jew, every Jew, it's possible without exception. Religious or not, they have circumcision. They were circumcised. I always love to say the following story that I read. A book written by a Jewish professor who wrote the whole book telling everyone that circumcision is cruel and it shouldn't be. And he himself, after he wrote that book, he had a child, a boy. And the first thing he had in mind, he was looking for a mohel, for, for a good mohel, somebody to circumcise his son. So I'm telling you, is the Jewish people crazy or not? So my question was, how come we were commanded to do such a thing, circumcision? Well, I, I say it's a kind of beginning to know that the Jew does not, is not expecting life to be in this world, to be 100% happy. In Pirkei Avot we say, the famous Mishnah from Masechet Sanhedrin, Kol Israel Yishlaim All Israel, without exception, have a share in the world to come. But we know that the majority of the Jewish people is not observant. How then will, have they, will, will, will they have the merit of having Olam Abba, the world to come, paradise? Perhaps it's because of circumcision. And the Midrash says that, that our father Abraham is standing at the entrance of, of, the, of paradise. And he looks upon you. Show me your card of identity. And you tell him, card of identity? I mean, he's only a soul. He, he died. Yeah, yeah, show me if you have circumcision. That's the, the, the card of identity of the Jew. You have circumcision? Enter. You don't have circumcision? Get out. That's grosso modo what, what the Midrash says. Which means that observance is needed. There is no question about it. Teshuvah is needed. Repentance is needed. No question about it. The Mashiach will come when only there will be full Teshuvah. And I believe the Jewish people is about to do Teshuvah. You might ask me a question. What Teshuvah are you talking about? What repentance? I mean, look what's happening in Balfour. Look what's happening in Tel Aviv, in Haifa, in most of the cities of Israel. No observance. Yes, there is Baruch Hashem, a sizable amount of Jews who are very observant. No question about it. God bless them all. But still, listen, where is Teshuvah by those who need to do it? 
it's gonna be, it's going to happen. How? I don't know. It's possible because there is going to be some kind of one day of terror, of big uh, fear. Maybe Iran. I don't know. Maybe the Jew will have to say, Shema Israel Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. Only God judges the hearts of, the, of, of every human being. Only He can really decide and know what is in the heart of every Jew. Didn't I say many times that even the most irreligious Jew in Israel, the one who has been persecuting the religious people and the people who learn Torah, I don't want to mention his name. He passed away a few years ago. But he himself insisted that his children should say Kaddish after he de he's dead. And that they should sit Shiva. And they said Shiva after he passed away. Unbelievable. The guy was known as a hater of the Torah people. Well, this should describe to us what is the meaning of being a Jew. Being a Jew does not mean what is his, his, inside his subconscious. Because the Jew in his subconscious, in his, deep in his heart, he is a Jew. He has circumcision. Now you may say, well, what is circumcision for what? He does not observe. Remember what the Torah says in this coming parasha. By Yom the eighth day. Why the eighth? There are reasons behind that. But there is another reason in Kabbalah. Eight is always beyond nature. Because nature is strictly limited to seven days. Six days of creation and Shabbat. After that, it's beyond. It's above nature. And that's the day. On the eighth day, that's where he should be, should be uh, circumcision. I think it's because it shows that we are a nation that is above nature. It has to be this way. It is above nature to have suffered so much for thousands of years and yet to remain Jewish. Unbelievable. But today we are not only Jewish. We are in the state of Israel. God bless the state of Israel. And we should pray at the same time that they should do, redem that they should do repentance. Yes. There must be Torah. There is, no, there is no Eretz Israel without Torah. There is no Torah without Eretz Israel. In Torah Ketorat Eretz Israel, and the mitzvot. But thank God there is Brit Mila. Ubayom Ashmini, above nature, amazing. For that I say hallelujah. Well, I don't dare say the whole hallel because the opinions greater than mine have decided otherwise. So, but still in my heart I will say to Hashem, thank you. And I will say, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Abdeh Hashem. Praised be the Lord. Praised be the Lord for a day such as this one, which is Yom Ha'atzma'ut. I dedicate these words to my brother Shmuel, who was among the befallen soldiers of Israel many years ago. He gave his life to save a whole battalion. At the same time, of course, I dedicate these words to all the soldiers of Israel, those who have fallen and those who are alive today with us. And to all the Jewish people, wherever they are, God bless you. God blesses us all. And may we see the days of the Mashiach soon in our days. God willing. Amen. Shabbat Shalom.